Hi, my name is Ophir Gabay, bringing you another QuickBooks Online tutorial. Uh, in our last video, we went over the chart of accounts, which is basically your, the backbone of the QuickBooks Online company file. It's the list of all the accounts that are going to appear on your financial statements. Um, this time, I wanted to go over your item list, or item list is what they refer to it on, on QuickBooks Desktop. In QuickBooks Online, it's called your products and services list. Um, and there's two ways to access that list. The first would be to click the gear icon and then go to products and services under the list menu. Uh, the second uh, way is Control Alt L to bring up the list menu, and then you could just click products and services. Uh, I'm in a sample QuickBooks Online company file called Craig's Design and Landscaping Services uh, and this is their products and services list. It's uh, as you can see it's made up of everything that that they uh, buy and resell um, and then they also have uh, the service items that they bill clients for. So it, looking at this list uh, you'll see that there's a couple different columns um, uh, what's cool about about this in QuickBooks Online is that you can also search for a, a specific um, item. So if you're looking for rocks, you just start typing it in here, and then you 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 get your search search results. So, anyways, um, as you can see, uh, there's uh, numerous columns. Uh, the first column is the name. Then you have your description, and then you have the account. This refers back to the chart of accounts, um, the account that you're going to use for this particular item. And we'll go into that um, a little bit later. We'll create a new item, and I'll go through the steps in doing that. Uh, and then you have your price or rate, and this is the rate that would appear on um, an invoice if you pull up this item. And then you also have uh, whether it's taxable or not. And then you have a quantity column. Uh, this quantity column would is only pertinent to inventory items uh, where you have where you keep track of uh, quantity on hand. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, service items such as design. You see, there's there's no quantity here. Um, and then of course you have your action um, column where you could delete or run a report for a specific item. Um, let's uh, go into creating a new item. Let's do that. So uh, to do that, you just click this new button on the top right hand corner. And the first step would be to name your item. Uh, you could give it a descriptive name like they did um, in Craig's Landscaping and Design. Um, or you could uh, name it, you know, you could have uh, inventory item numbers. So let's just say you wanted to name this item 654. Yeah. 645958. Alright. You can do that too. Um, so let's just use leave that as an example. And then uh, the next step would be to uh, either mark it as uh, to keep track of quantity on hand or not. Uh, if you mark this checkbox, you're indicating to QuickBooks Online that you want to keep track of your quantity for this particular item which means that it's an inventory item that you're buying to resell. So if you were a retailer and you, you buy and, and resell widgets, you know, you, you would name it widgets here. And then um, you, you would have your initial quantity on hand. That's only when you're really, um, when you're starting a brand new QuickBooks Online company file. You never really want to use this um, after, uh, like, um, after you, you already are in business and you've already established your QuickBooks file. You should, you shouldn't. Um, this is equivalent to the opening balance on, on QuickBooks desktop. Um, anyways, if you do uh, put a number into here uh, besides zero, um, and then you put as of date, it's going to create a journal entry and basically post that to opening balance equity. Um, but, but we could go into that in more detail in a different video. Uh, for right now, we're just going to put a zero and as of uh, today, July 20th. And then um, 
your inventory asset account, it's usually always going to be inventory asset. And just leave it that way. And then uh, on the left side, you have your sales information. Uh, that's what you want to appear on your invoices whenever you're selling this. this uh, your invoices or sales receipt whenever you're selling this item to a customer. So um, we're here we can, we'll type widgets. And then um, the purchasing information. This is when you create a purchase order to your vendor to buy widgets. Uh, this would be the information that you want to show up on that purchase order. So uh, you could, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to put in here. Um, it, whatever uh, is more fitting for your business, let's say. Okay, uh, the next step would be to create uh, your price. This is your price that you're selling it to your customers for. Um, by putting a number in here, you're going to allow QuickBooks to automatically populate invoices and sales receipt with this number whenever you're creating um, an invoice using this item. And then uh, on this side, you could create, um, you could input your cost. And basically, uh, the same thing goes for this. Uh, whenever you're creating a purchase order, it's going to auto populate with your cost number um, just to save you some time. And then uh, here, very importantly, you, you have to select your income account. Now, uh, some company files will have different types of income. You can have, you know, um, your, your income broken down into different categories, uh, different types of income on your chart of accounts. And so you would want to select your um, income account for this specific item. Uh, for example, you could have uh, sales of product income, and then you can have sales of service income just to, to give you an example and then your expense account the one that you're going to want to use whenever you sell this uh, this um, inventory item um, so in this case we, we chose cost of goods sold uh, now if th if this was um, a service type item or or an other charge item uh, you could just you know it, it would be a little bit different you could yeah, let's just call it construction and then um, you would make sure that this box is not checked because it, we're not, this is not an inventory item. We're not keeping track of, of quantity on hand. And then um, over here, you would have a description, right? Construction. And then uh, this is going to be the description again on your sales forms. And then here, um, it, you would mark this if you're purchasing this item um, from a, from a vendor. This would mean, in this case, it would be since it's a service construction. Uh, you could you you would be uh, hiring subcontractors. That's what this is basically saying. So you're not you're not purchasing construction. You're you're uh, subcontracting construction. So if you if you want to do that, you could select here and then. Uh, give it whatever description that, that you want to because you're, you're really um, you're not going to use purchase orders that often for this um, and then this would be the cost that you're hiring out your um, subcontractors at and I mean uh, this this is the cost that you're you're hiring it out to your clients and then this is the cost that you pay your subcontractors and then uh, here you would probably have something such as a cost of goods sold account, um, direct labor or, or contract labor, something like that. Um, and then and that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, so once you're done with that, you just save and close. Um, and then you don't forget you have to mark it either as taxable or non-taxable, and that's going to uh, vary based on what what type of item it is and your sales tax jurisdiction um, and then up here on the top right hand corner all you could also have the option to um, create sub accounts so sub items and services and that's um, if you want to organize your your service and products list a little bit uh, you could create subcategories um, to make things easier to find and such um, okay that's that's about it um, 
If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. You could also email me at accounting at firstclasstaxsolutions.com. I'll put the link um, in the description as well. Also, if you need any QuickBooks consulting, uh, please feel free to check out our website, uh, www.firstclasstaxsolutions.com. Or you could go to quickquickbooks.com if you want to schedule your one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, okay, I think that covered everything. Um, please feel free to um, subscribe to the channel for more related videos like this that are, I'm going to be releasing in the near future. Um, and that's, that's about it. Um, thank you for watching and have a nice day.